back. Today, for Get Fit Friday, I decided to try out this homemade sauerkraut recipe that I got from Farmhouse on Boone. This lady makes like all kinds of homemade, super cool stuff. Me and my mom can start following her. There are plenty of videos of how to make sauerkraut, but she just makes it a little bit more practical. I liked her recipe, how she made it really simple and put it together like this. So I'm gonna follow her recipe and how she did it. And she uses three medium-sized cab cabbages, so that's what I'm going to do. Mine are organic, so I'm gonna add one purple and I have two green. She says that it will fill up one <coughs> gallon, three heads of cabbage is gonna fill up one gallon of the jarring jar. So we're gonna see <laughs> how much I can get out of this one, try to shove it in there. And this will also provide you with natural probiotics, um, so you don't have to buy it at the store. Uh, my mom made this a couple months back, she made like three jars, which got crazy. And it actually was really good, and I ate it every day, and man did it work for my gut health, and it tasted really good. Now she got a little crafty and made some other sauerkraut and carrots and like beets and stuff like that. They were okay, but it's not as great as the regular sauerkraut with just the salt and cabbage. I liked it the original way. Uh, I never really liked sauerkraut until I had it like this, and it's good. I like, naturally I like sour stuff, so I think that's why I really like the original recipe. Anyway, let's get to this. This is what this video is about. We're gonna make homemade sauerkraut, uh, natural probiotics, and all the probiotics are in these cabbages, just waiting to be risen and fermented. So that's what we're gonna do. If you are interested in that, please stay tuned. Before we get into it, guys, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, turn on your notifications, and let's begin. So she says, Lisa from Farmhouse, says to, and most of the videos I've watched, they do the same thing. They take the first layer off, and I'm actually gonna discard the first layer of this one because it doesn't look that great. Um, it's a little beat up, so I'm gonna take that one off and put these aside, and then I'll show you guys what to do with them in just a minute. So that's the one I'm gonna keep for that one. And then this one, I'm gonna take the first one off. And make sure you, everything is pretty clean, so you don't want any uh, bacteria in your sauerkraut while it's trying to ferment. Make sure that these jars are really clean. And even if they have a little dust in them, you want to just kind of give them a good clean and let them air dry. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are going to cut the core out of each cabbage. say also that you do want to make sure that you use the right amount of salt because if you don't put enough salt in it it could cause the back to the bad bacteria to grow and if you put too less then it can cause um, some molding and some of that bad bacteria so if you put the right amount of salt it will allow the it'll prevent the bad bacteria from growing and therefore letting the good bacteria form and ferment while it's doing its thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and decor all of these really quick and then I'm gonna chop them up into smaller slices because I'm going to be trying out the new oyster processor that me and my aunt just purchased off of walmart.com. Walmart. Um, obviously we're in the so I'm kind of in the pandemic, so we are trying not to leave the house, so we've been kind of in order crazy lately. And so we ordered a processor uh, specifically because she wants to make um, to grind meat and salsa. And I really wanted to do this. When my mom did it, she cut everything with her hand and it took forever. Forever. I'm not trying to do that. I'd rather, much rather have a processor so that I can do this quickly because my baby's sleeping is the only time I ever get to make a decent video. Well, crazy, baby, gay, it's sleeping. So I'm gonna try to do this as quick as possible to make a decent video to show you guys how I do this. I'll be right back. I'm going to slice these up into pieces and then we will try the process. Let's see. 
This is the oyster processor, 14 cup with five cup nesting bowl. So I took the nesting bowl out because obviously I need more room than that, that little thing. So um, farmhouse used this shredding blade. She uses like a cheese grater part of it because she says it makes it smaller, which is more of what I want. I don't want them to be like long big chunks. And if you wanted to do that, then you could just use the slicing side back here. But I'm gonna do what she did because I like, and I think that's what my mom did. It was really fine and like small, like really small enough to fit onto your like sausages and stuff like that. So that's how I would like to try and make it. And um, it's the first time I'm using this. We just really unboxed it last weekend. We haven't had a chance to use it, so I'm going for it right now. And it's pretty cool. It's got this little compartment back here where you can hold and store your blades so they don't get lost or maybe you throw them in a drawer and then go reach in and get a slicey finger. That'd be awful. So that's a good idea. I'm glad that they came up with that. But you have to fit them in there nicely or it won't shut. So I'm not sure what this extra piece is for. I hope I can play with that. I think this may be for the nesting bowl. So I'll have to find that out later. But for now, you just put it on there. It sits on there pretty tightly. And then it looks like we just slide this lid thing. So when you put it on, put it on where this little black thingy is on your left side, and then it'll lock. You just turn it and it locks like this. So that's how you do it. Hopefully this uh, does what I need to do, because I've never used this before. I think I've even ever used like an actual process before. So we'll see, and this is just to push your veggies in. So I'm gonna turn it on and then looks like we're gonna put, I don't want to make a smile or fold them. Oh, well, we'll see, I'm gonna try it out with me. Put them in there and then you push it down. So let's see how this bad boy works. Oh yeah, there's these buttons right here. <laughs> so there's pulse, chop, shred, and then off, of course. So I'm going to use shred. That was cool, but Thing is gonna walk in here or something. It's kind of coming out. I don't to get that. No, yes. This looks like this is like a very bigger amount. Let's just try it with the big amount. Shall we? Shall we? We're just gonna smash it like that and see what happens. Oh, and again. So I'm about to do this whole bowl. Okay, so this thing got pretty full the first time, so I decided to obviously dump it. I didn't want to over exhaust the machine, especially the first time using it. I'm almost done, now I just have the purple cabbage to go, and then it's massage time. Red one. Never leave a man behind. Okay, so that is three cabbages worth. I'm not gonna lie, I can't get pretty messy because this was this was kind of messy. What else? For cheap probiotics and a tasty one of that, I think it is well worth it. The little bit of mess that you gotta clean up. And I do give this oyster. Uh, processor on A plus. It works pretty good. It's pretty hefty. We'll see how long it lasts us, but I have a feeling that my Pia is going to use it up. So she's really gonna put it to the test. I will see. So that shredded three cabbages. This would be 14. 14 later. So I'm going to empty this out and now we're gonna begin the massage. I might need a bigger bowl. This is a pretty big bowl too. Farmhouse, she is a, a stock pot because she needs that much room and she didn't have a gigantic bowl. Maybe I should have done the same thing. Okay, let me clean this up really quick. Okay, so guess what? And I'm having to use a stock pot anyway because I thought my bowl was pretty big, but it wasn't big enough. So I ended up having to use a stock pot anyway. 
which was perfect for three cabbages. And still, I feel like I should have probably used a bigger pot. This is the biggest one that we have. So I'm just going to massage it in like she says. This is what my mom did for like ever. But I don't know, she says you only need to do like five minutes or whatever. And then I just salt what she says. Uh, she used to two tablespoons for her three medium cabbages, which is what we got here. And I'm just gonna massage for a minute and then add the salt. And then massage. I am gonna be using sea salt. She used pink Himalayan salt. I don't know that much here. Um, she says as long as you don't use iodized uh, table salt. Is this salt, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So two tablespoons. I'm gonna go ahead and drop. And this is the Mexican sea salt. Mix it all around and massage in there. You really want to get the salt mixed up in those juices before you end up putting it in your jar so it's all evenly spread around. I'm gonna do that for about five minutes. some fancy weighing rocks, but they were expensive, they were ridiculous. So I did see some people use like sandwich bags, but they ended up just putting water in them to weigh it down. But farmhouse, um, boom, uh, boom, she um, used just rocks from the garden, which ended up having rocks in the yard. And I had extra rocks because I collected rocks for Gay to do a project. And now I can't, but it was rocks. So I did find a few that were just perfect to weigh down this, weigh down the cabbage. Um, so that it's under the brine and that's what you want. Apparently you want all the, as much cabbage as possible to be under the brine, that juicy, uh, watery substance. And that's how, that's what's gonna ferment pretty well. Under Lisa Boone, the farmhouse, she did make a good point about trying to do this because obviously it can be really messy. You, you're gonna make a mess either way, but I think it's worth it. So she puts the, um, the jar inside a pot or in a sink or something because it gets messy and you really don't want to like lose some of that yummy goodness. Um, outside on all over the place. You don't want it to like touch and push until you try to get it as far down as possible. And she ends up using like, I forgot what the tool was that she used to push it down. I don't have that here. And if it wilts, it's going to make more room in there and the juices are gonna rise and that's what we want. So remember in the beginning when I took these first layers off, we discarded the outer layer because the one that you don't know where it's been or what it's been exposed to on the top of it. Uh, so it's dirty and um, I don't know if it has anything else on it. So I took them up and took away and then I took one more layer off and washed them off. And she, she folds them up and puts them in here. And what this does is keeps all those little bitty cabbages below the brine as much as possible. And she pushes it down. So I don't want you to squirt out of these. I'll do it slowly. And that pretty much, that's keeping it pretty tight down there too. It's like snug, and that's what she says you want, so I'm doing that. And all those juices are just rising above it. Later, because I feel like there's more juices and it may float or may rise a little bit more, but it is like tight in it. Wait, wait. So then I'm gonna take my rocks that I got from the Gaddy, which were perfectly small, and she just puts them in a baggie like this lays them on top of the big outer leaves that we took off earlier and shoved in there, you can see. And this will help, ooh, look if it's in there. Yeah, it does. Ooh, barely. So this is gonna weigh 
help weigh the cabbage back down that's tucked under the leaves. I'm trying to make sure that I took out as much air as possible out of the bag because I'm gonna put the lid on. And she says you don't want the lid on there like super tight. I think it's not stuff, too stuff, but she says you want it really tight. No air. So we'll see. She doesn't put the lid on like super tight and make it really snug. She kind of twists it on there enough where it's not gonna like pop off, but it's not screwed on all the way where uh, because it's, this is gonna sweat and the brine is gonna float, kind of pour out of it a little bit as it ferments throughout the days. So we'll see if we can fit the rest of this in this big jar. Okay, so it did make just enough to fill up this big giant pickle jar, which is looks like it's empty. And this regular large jar, I'm just gonna make them really tight right now so I can rinse them off because this was crazy messy. So I'm gonna clean this up. I didn't have enough of this, which is makes sense, um, but I had it out just in case. It just looked like way more than I expected, but it did really condense into those, and it's really tight. So as I loosen it, it's gonna wet and it's going to leak juices all, all over the place. So if you want to do this, make sure you have a tray or something that your ladies on. So I'm using my Thea's cooking dish just in case so we don't have a big mess while we wait for this to ferment over the week, over one week. Some people wait longer than that, but Farmhouse recommends to do it for like a week. When my mom did it, we did taste it after like three days and it was really good already and we were already able to taste it like a little bit if we wanted to, but we waited for like a whole five days and then seven days. Some of them we let go for two weeks and I think we let one go for like a whole month and it was even better when we wait longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash these off really quick and put these aside. Okay, so there you have it guys. Your natural probiotics slash homemade sauerkraut. I got this recipe specifically and how she did it was from Farmhouse on Boone. Uh, the lady's name is Lisa. I love following her. She's got some great ideas and she be taking care of business for her and her whole family. So she, but I did want to let you know that she did uh, already have like the pro jars and when the pandemic started, me and my mom were trying to be resourceful and getting probiotics because we didn't have, people were running out of the money. There was food shortages and we couldn't pay for probiotics to boost our immune system and keep us healthy. So we were recycling the jars. So that's why I used a pickle jar and she had bought this three pack from Walmart, but she took two packs or two jars with her in Mexico and I only had a few, which there's not, you know, we're not eating it like that crazy. Um, we'll see if my uncle likes it and how, how much he likes it because then I can make more. But this is what we have so far during the pandemic when we were short of um, stuff. So I just gonna loosen the lid here and just leave them like this and let them sweat and ferment for about a week and we'll see how they come out. I'm gonna leave them right here in a semi cool place, but not super, super hot. And we'll see how it comes out. Okay, it is day six of the sauerkraut. I'm gonna give it a try and see how it tastes. I'm going to try it and see if I like it. And if I need it to be a little bit more sour, I think I'm gonna wait another uh, five days or maybe a week, depending on how sour it is. Let's give it a try. That's okay, it's a little sour, but it could be far more salty. I think I'm gonna let it sit. It's still kind of crunchy, and I liked it when it was a little softer. I think I'm gonna let it sit, and we'll check up on it in about a week or five days, and we'll see how it tastes then for our homemade sauerkraut slash probiotic. All right, hey guys, it, it's been two whole weeks since we made our homemade sauerkraut and decided to wait another week because in the previous little clip, uh, it was only five days and it was like still very watery, didn't taste very salty like at all. And it was very, very crunchy. And today marks a whole two weeks of letting the sauerkraut homemade sit and ferment for two whole weeks. So now I'm gonna try it and see if it's a little bit more salty um, and if it's gotten to where I want it to be. I want it to be pretty soft and like salty, like the original sauerkraut did. So let's see. Well, my mom made it, she made it, and it was like just perfect. So we'll see. It's still a little crunchy, but it's way more sour, but not too salty. But it is more sour than it was on the fifth day. So I think it's pretty good. I can eat it, but by the time next week comes around, the other jar, the big pickle jar, 
that'll be three weeks so that one probably tastes even better I'm letting it ferment for a whole three weeks it's gonna be good although this is pretty good already it's just a little crunchier than i like it but just to get that those probiotics i am going to eat this jar and hopefully by the time i hit the second jar it'll be even better so that's it that's how our homemade sauerkraut came out after two whole weeks of letting it ferment it's amazing and i love this recipe from farmhouse on boone thank you lisa it was amazing but messy but so worth it thanks for watching guys this is angel for get fit friday please hit that like button subscribe turn on your notifications and we will see you next friday thanks